everyone. Thanks for listening. This week, Trevor's bed is made out of spiders. Noel Spearhead's The Naked Underwater Mammal Project, presented by Chips Ahoy. And Tom can't find out how to open his new book. This is Season 2, Episode 6, The Franker Games. Let's play. In reality, he should have just had a, a wooden box, and then, but we would have never had St. Patty's Day, and that's the history of St. Patty's Day. Speaking of St. Patty's Day, I've got a game that I think yes. that you guys are all going to enjoy. I was really hoping you'd say that. Um, and that game is called Theme Between the Lines. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the reaction I was looking for. <laughs> that's it. That's all, I, that's all I can give you. Whoa. It's, whoa. <laughs> it wasn't like an excited shocked whoa. It was like a hold up, slow just, down. Just scared. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> like a deer jumped onto the road. Not an excited whoa, a cautious whoa. So I was I was prepping for a theme between the lines, and I was like, you know, I feel like every single theme we've done is about movies, or in Trevor's case, Giselle Bunchen. Uh, <laughs> and I really just wanted. So I was thinking about themes that fit our mutual like hobbies. So with that in mind, the World's Fair of 1893 was held in celebration of the 400th anniversary of Columbus's discovery of the New World. Which of these products was not introduced during the 1893 World's Fair? A. Juicy Fruit Gum B. Cream of Wheat or C. Corn Flakes I love how you said this kind of it, it's got a little, a little bit of uh, everything that we like because it, I think it will have nothing that will, no, no right. movies, no <laughs> yeah. Giselle Bunchen, and no music, so it's perfect. Uh, um, can I, I ask where go. this was? Chicago, right? Chicago, World's Fair, 1893. I'm going to go cream of wheat. All right, Connor's going Getting cream of wheat. Creamy and my so, wheaties. Juicy fruit, cornflakes, cream of wheat, and what else? Just those three. I'm going cornflakes. Trevor's going cornflakes. I'm also going to go cornflakes. Okay. I heard a podcast episode on the history of cornflakes and the person who created it, and it was just batshit insane. It is nuts, <laughs> and it was not introduced at the 1893 World's Fair, so that's a point hey. for Trevor and Noel. Yeah. Was this... I'm pretty sure the guy who made cornflakes also invented, like, Salisbury steaks. I could Maybe. be totally wrong. The guy who invented cornflakes invented them to be the blandest breakfast possible to ma- not make you horny. Yep. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> and if it's the same guy who invented Salisbury steaks, he thought eating the most amount of meat and gravy was he- the healthiest option for your body. <laughs> so, strike two. Yeah, his food pyramid was a square. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the bottom of the square was gravy and the top was meat. Yeah. Uh, which is the opposite that you would normally put meat and gravy. But. Yeah, it was <laughs> so more just a steak floating on top. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was the cereal he was eating before he discovered cornflakes. All right, so question number two. The Great North Maine Woods are an expansive wilderness in Maine that is still largely unexplored. Which of these is not a feature of the North Maine Woods? A, Mount Adams, the tallest peak in Maine. B, the Allagrash River a tributary of the St. John's River, or C, razor shins, an immortal humanoid with razor sharp bones and a thirst for liquor. So just <laughs> anyone living up there. Oh my God. And you said which one was not again, right? Again, which one is not? I'm going to have to say A, Mount Adams. I do think going it's Mount Adams. Connor yeah, also was, going with A. I was going to go with A also. I'm, yeah, I'm going to stick with it. Going with A? I really want to go with Razor Shins. No, that's got too much detail. It's it's, And it just sounds like any old angry dude. <laughs> it's just the old guy at the gas station in every horror movie. Just like, yup, don't want to yeah. go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> but but please, can I have some liquor? Yeah. So yes, the correct ad- answer is Mount Adams, which is the second tallest peak in New Hampshire. So that's a point for everybody. Puts it to uh, tied for first with Trevor and Noel at two, and Connor has one. Uh, Razor Shins was a Prohibition-era 
urban legend that if you would leave a jug of liquor out for him, he would cut down a tree with you with his legs. Uh, cut down a tree for you with his legs. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> and if you forgot, he would decapitate you with, with his, his legs. legs? <laughs> Honestly, both ex- good outcomes. I'd be satisfied with either. <laughs> Question number three. Samuel Adams was a founding father and the governor of Massachusetts from 1794 to 1797. What was his relationship with President John Adams? A. They were brothers. B. They were cousins. Or C. Samuel Adams was John Adams' uncle. I believe it's C. I'm going to say C. No. Brothers, cousins... Uncle, nephew, fuck. I'm going to go cousins. Brothers, cousins, uncle, nephew, fuck. <laughs> so Trevor, Trevor's going cousins. <laughs> I'm going to go cousins as... No. Connor is gone uncle I'm going to go uncle, nephew. All right, so that is uncle, nephew for both Noel and Connor. And Trevor has cousins. They're cousins. No! <laughs> That puts oh. Trevor in the lead, uh, three to two to one. Uh, Trevor going for the sweep in this as we move into question number four. The SS Edmund Fitzgerald was an American Great Lakes <laughs> freighter that sank in Lake Superior during a storm along with the, the entire crew of 29 men. When she was first commissioned, she was the largest ship on North America's Great Lakes and remains the largest to have sunk there. It was the subject of Gordon Lightfoot's famous song, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. What year did the Edmund Fitzgerald sink? A. 1935 B. 1955 Or C. 1975 Fuck. I feel like this is one of those things that I knew for a while. It was 35, 55, and 75? Yep. What year did the song come out? Song came out in like the nineties or something like that. Oh jeez, really? Yeah. It was also like a twenty five minute song, right? Very long song. No, it's, it's it's not I'm twenty going, minutes, but it's very long. I'm going fifty five. I'm going nineteen fifty five. I'm gonna say thirty five. Uh, I'll say thirty five. As much as I love all this Gordon Lightfoot talk. <laughs> I mean who doesn't? <laughs> the correct answer is nineteen seventy five. The song no. came out in nineteen seventy six. Oh really? Wow. Yep. Huh. All right. So that uh, no one won got that round, but it does mean that Trevor wins, but does not sweep. God damn, so close. And, and this I... has been Theme Between the Lines. If you think you know the secret theme of this week's game, reach out to us on social media at the underscore never underscore games, or shoot us an email at hello at thenevergames.com. And completely forgot there was a theme, uh, but I did come in second again, and I love that. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> all right well this is the never games my name is trevor i am the ceo of stickerbox studios and the producer here at the never games my name is tom o'brien and every inch of me is full with corned beef <laughs> that's so gross sounding <laughs> it's... uh my name is connor provost and i did not get any corned beef today but I do have Guinness, so it's launch <laughs> And my name is Noel McGinnis, and I am still captain of the blue team. And as Trevor alluded to earlier, this is the Never Games, the number one rated podcast for all cultures on Earth, including but not limited to sourdough. What's going on, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I want to backtrack. Noel, do you think that Sour, I guess so, sourdough is technically a culture. It, it comes from a yeast culture. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still I, working on the catchphrase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's up, guys? It's St. Patrick's Day. It is. We're recording yeah, on St. Yeah. Patrick's Day. Happy that. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, the only banter I had was the JoJo and Joe comparison. But Yeah, but you wasted it. No, yeah. that was, that was the intro all. banter. No, it wasn't. That. <laughs> that was pre-recording banter. Yeah, that was yeah. way. You did that well, way too early. Trevor wasn't on the call when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I mean, t- to be fair though, 
to be found. Joe Rogan is one of our biggest fans, and he'll understand, right? <laughs> Joe Rogan is one of our biggest fans, um, but we use the term biggest uh, sort of ironically. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a metaphor. Because, Noel, what, what is it exactly that you discovered? Yeah, so JoJo uh, Siwa, who I still don't really know who she is. But she's, she's, like a, she's like a teenage musician person. She's famous for being on the internet. She's a pop star. Um, she is richer oh God. already than I will ever be, and she's what, fifteen years old? Seventeen. 17? She looks. <laughs> um, she looks like she thought Barbie commercials were for like style. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's her whole thing is that she like she like dresses like a like a Barbie slash Disney princess as opposed yeah. to like most seventeen year olds she, now who dress like Instagram. She doesn't dress like a mix between a Barbie and a princess. She dresses like a Barbie who then dressed like a princess, like over the top of everything else. Right. I believe they're called bar- Barbie princesses. Ah, <laughs> they have those. Is that a thing? <laughs> but anyway, oh, yeah, yeah, probably. Am... Uh, anyway, point of the story: JoJo Siwa is two inches taller than Joe Rogan, noted also for being <laughs> looking like he's fifteen all the time, all as well. <laughs> He's a very scary looking fifteen year old. Is that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what fifteen year olds were you hanging out with? Right. <laughs> oh no, they only said they were fifteen when they were around adults. <laughs> that makes it a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, Noel has been six foot two since he was twelve years old. Yeah, that's Fact, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty much true. Everyone um, is short to Noel. So yeah, including <laughs> Joe Rogan, which oh boy. He still did not know he was that short. Oh, yeah. He's taller than Daniel Radcliffe, than Billy Joe Armstrong, and Tom Cruise, who are all Tom my Cruise, height. yeah. The same, <laughs> and roughly the same height as well as Bill Russell. He's I don't a, know. Sport, he's a sports guy. He was like 6'11 or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think that's uh, true, then. So, Noel, in addition well, we to no all your knowing. interesting factoids about JoJo Siwa, uh, do you have a game for us? Yes, I do. Oh, man, I'm pumped for this one. Uh, I am calling this game Gamey Mick Game Face. And this is about a passion <laughs> I never really knew I had until I started researching, and that is botched uh, internet naming contests. Yes! <laughs> All right. <laughs> I love this. This is also a passion of mine. This is okay. based on... Oh, shit. Okay, Bodie well... McBoatface, I assume? Yeah, Bodie McBoatface. Uh... <laughs> Adjacent. I didn't use Bodie McBoatface because there's so that's many a famous of them. One. Though. There's so many of them. Um, all right. So there, <laughs> I have a total of four multiple choice questions with a fifth um, tiebreaker, and away we go. Long before Bodie McBoatface even happens in 2007, Greenpeace attempted to drum up some attention towards the plight of humpback whales when they were threatened by the Japanese uh, by Japanese fisheries. Greenpeace held a contest on the website to name a whale. It was tracking by satellite. Of the 30 names, which one swept the board with a collective 78% of votes? Is it A, Gale the male whale with the stale, ta- with the stale frail whale tail? <laughs> B, Mr. Splashy Pants? <laughs> C, Zachary? Or D, the Naked Underwater Mammal Project presented by Chips Ahoy? <laughs> Uh, oh man! What was B? Well, uh, so A, Gale the male whale with a stale frail <laughs> whale tail. B, Mr. Splashy Pants. <laughs> C, Zachary. Or D, the Naked Underwater Mammal Project presented by Chips Ahoy. <laughs> and which of, so, which of those is the correct, like the real name? Did you come up with the fake ones, or were they also options? I came up with. Most of the fake ones in this entire game. Okay. I, well fucking done, Noel. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> so A sounds like something that you would have made up. I think D is just <laughs> too much. I don't think you came up with D. <laughs> so I'm going to go D. D. I'm, I'm right. going to go A. I'm going to go B. Is it Zachary? I swear to <laughs> God, it's, not. It's, it's not Zachary. Uh, congratulations to Tom. The right one is Mr. Splashy Pants. Damn. Good ah. job. See, the thing is, is that you guys were thinking in a 2021 mindset. 
yeah. as opposed to a 2007 mindset. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I just didn't uh, think he would come up with presented by Chips Ahoy. That's pretty really yeah. fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, I had this took me like six hours to do. I had so much fun making up these fake ones. Um, all My right. game took me 11 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two. Eight years ago, Mountain Dew was given assistance uh, by the always wholesome and lighthearted internet when naming a new flavor for an apple soda. After si sifting through the dozens of pro-Hitler and homophobic names, oh, some popular nominees were uh. Moist Nugget, Dick Butt, and Methamphetagrine. <laughs> <laughs> Methamphetagrine! <laughs> However, which one of these was not one of the 510 nominees for the new flavor of Mountain Dew? God, that's a lot of nuts. And so I sad. read all of them. <laughs> uh, so Wait, which, which one was not? Which one is the fake flavor? Okay. Sierra Mist. <laughs> kiwi, for, <laughs> kiwi for my wee wee. <laughs> what the apple did you just appling say to me, you little apple? <laughs> I'll have you know I graduated top of my class in the Navy SEALs. And I've been involved in numerous Shut secret up. raids on no, Al-Qaeda. Don't and finish I, it. <laughs> and they j it just stops there. I think they ran out of room. <laughs> or D, soda. <laughs> oh, God. It's got to be between soda and Sierra Mist, right? <laughs> so which one is the fake one? And yes, gonna, there is a fake one. I'm going to go Sierra Mist. What was B again? Yeah. Kiwi for my wee wee. <laughs> 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 for the for the apple flavored soda. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Tommy said Sierra Mist. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna go kiwi for my wee wee. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna go. What the apple did you just apple say to me? Apple whatever the fuck <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> congratulations to Trevor. The fake one is Kiwi for my Wee Wee. God damn it. <laughs> and that is a tie going into question number three with one apiece for, Tre or for Trevor and Tom. <laughs> All right. In 2011, the city of Austin surveyed, his, surveyed its residents in the hopes that it could come up with a new name for its solid waste services department. The feedback was staggering, but not exactly in the way city planners had expected. What name was ultimately victorious for their solid waste services department? Was it A, the Austin Refuse Sur Service encompassing the heights to Onion Creek and Lake Walter, or Arsehole? <laughs> Is it B, My Wife Helen's Shopping Cart? <laughs> C, The Shit Pit, sponsored by Fitbit? <laughs> <laughs> or D, the Fred Durst Society of the Humanities and Arts. <laughs> now, to, to clarify, solid waste, is that trash or poop? I'm assuming it's trash. <laughs> yeah. It's like a garbage okay. dump. Yeah. Yeah. What were those options again? Uh, the Arsehole, oh, yeah. My Wife Helen's Shopping Cart, The Shit Pit sponsored by Fitbit, or the Fred Durst <laughs> Society of the Humanities and Arts. <laughs> And this is which one won? Uh, which name won, yes. The others are fakes. I'm going to go with the shit pit sponsored by Fitbit. All right. I'm going to go with uh, Fred Durst. I'm also going Fred Durst. All right. Congratulations to Trevor and Connor. <laughs> yes. It is the Fred Durst Society of Humanities and the Arts. <laughs> This is the second time you had mentioned sponsored by. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. It was just like one of these. Like, you had to have gotten the idea from somewhere. Uh, so I actually got a direct noting from uh, the Austin City spokeswoman, Jennifer Herber. She said, at first we thought we need to take some of these down. <laughs> because the website is just acting, acting up to way too much. But then she said, the whole point is to change the name to something, uh, to something ultimately progressive. And we're not a stuffy city department. So they rejected the Fred Durst Society, and they ultimately decided to go with the, uh, the Austin Resource Recovery Facility. So good work, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> All amazing. right. Question number four. Uh, so this is the final question. Uh, and I think, Trevor, if you get it right, you, you run away. 
Yeah. All right. But we can both tie him, correct? Yeah, it's you two can to both one to tie one, him, right? and then we can go to yeah. a, go to a fifth tiebreaker. Of these stories of leaning into internet naming snafus and coming out of it with a positive ending, which one is false? So you're trying to figure out which is the fake story here. In 2019, uh, the football team Buffalo Bills took to the internet matrix for name ideas for their new state-of-the-art practice facility. The winning name was the Jim Kelly four-time Super Bowl runner-up Department of Victory. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, the quarterback who brought the Bills to the Super Bowl uh, four years in a row without winning, responded, those four Super Bowl losses? Yeah, it sucks that we didn't win, but what are you going to do about it? Ultimately, one of the best decisions I ever made uh, was when I came out to be a Buffalo Bill. Kelly ultimately gave his endorsement to the facility name, but Buffalo ended up going with a different direction. Number B. Walmart status, uh, started a contest where uh, whichever store got the most points, rapper and noted club banger Pitbull would perform there. <laughs> After the internet decided that he would go and perform in rural Kodiak, Alaska, Pitbull <laughs> responded, and I quote, you got to understand that I, w I'm, I am willing to go anywhere in the world for my fans, and he ended up going there and performing anyway. Last up, an internet campaign to send Taylor Swift to perform at whichever school in the U.S. earned the most votes uh, had quite the awkward result when the winning school was a Horace Mann school for the deaf. <laughs> <laughs> After declining to play for obvious reasons, uh, Swift and a few other organizations teamed up to donate over $50,000 for the school. The Horace Mann school principal, Jeremiah Ford, responded, uh, quote, are we the winner? Absolutely. So which one is fake? Is it the Buffalo Bills practice facility, Pitbull in Alaska, or the Taylor Swift going to perform at the school for the deaf? Which is oh. fake. I'm, I'm fairly confident in this one, so I'll let you guys go first. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say uh, Pitbull in Alaska. Is fake? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go with Taylor Swift. I feel like I heard something about the t-swift story uh, see i didn't i feel like that's something that'd be something that's such big news i'm going a <laughs> uh, oh, okay because oh, no. i know that the pitbull one is true and i'm fairly positive that the taylor swift swift one is guys locking it in yep all yeah. right well now i don't want to lock it in it's too well, too late no, <laughs> too late for you <laughs> Congratulations to Tom for bringing ah. us to overtime. It, it was indeed, there was no such building called the Jim Kelly four-time Super Bowl runner-up Department of Victory. <laughs> all right. If, if you guys don't get this one right, I don't know what to do because this is all I had. Um, um. All right. Here we go. In 2013, Durex, the condom company, announced the launch of a rush delivery app aptly named Durex SOS Condoms. <laughs> the app promised to deliver uh, to couples emergency con condoms whenever they need them, wherever they needed them. As a part of a launch of the campaign, Durex decided to ask the, vote, ask the crowd to vote on which city they would like to begin the service. Unfortunately, they did not limit which cities would be included, allowing any city to win. So this process easily, was easily susceptible to trolling, leading which city to win. Was it Ding Dong, Texas? <laughs> Batman, Turkey, Bird in Hand, Pennsylvania, or Cockermouth, England. <laughs> I'm going to go with Batman, Turkey. Okay. Say them all again, please. Ding Dong, Texas, Batman, Turkey, Bird in Hand, Pennsylvania, and Cockermouth, England. I'm going to say Cockermouth. I was feeling. I'm, I'll go Texas. I'll go Ding Dong. Did you? You didn't want to complete that sentence. You didn't want to say you were feeling <laughs> Cockermouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, locking it in. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, the result of this was even more hilarious because 
Batman, Turkey is an oil rich, conservative, and predominantly Muslim city. So, congratulations to Tom for that pulling out that victory. <laughs> That's why I picked it. Uh, uh, and this so, was... as an aside, right by uh, Burdenhand in Pennsylvania, there are two other towns. Uh, one is Blue Balls, <laughs> and one is Virginville. No way. <laughs> Blue Balls is where traditionally unmarried men lived, and Virginville is traditionally where unmarried women lived. Uh, <laughs> If we come out of any lessons from this game, it's Pennsylvania's weird. And that has oh, yeah. been Gamey McGameface, one of my favorite games I've ever played. <laughs> that was really good. That was great. Wait for Tom. Damn Wait it. Wait for Tom. God, that, that was really good. That was a that was a really good game, Noel. That was uh, a good game. Well done. You. Unfortunately, yeah. I kind of like I squeezed out like the first fifteen pages of Google results, so I don't know how soon I can do like another version of this, but hopefully. <laughs> All right, well, uh, do we want to jump into a break? Let's yeah, let's do, do a break. I got to get my charger it. anyway, so I need a break. So there. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Today's episode is presented by Clark's. Clark's story began almost 200 years ago when Cyrus and James Clark made a slipper from sheepskin. At the time, it was groundbreaking, a combination of invention and craftsmanship that remained at the heart of what Clark's does. From the very beginning, Clark's has always thought differently. Brilliant ideas are what sets Clark's apart. We are teaming up with Clark's and Podgo to bring you up to 30% off on select items including on the iconic Clark's Desert Boot by going to podgo.co slash Clark's. That's P-O-D-G-O dot C-O slash Clark's. All right. Uh, so now it is time to reveal the theme from last week's theme between the lines. Uh, and congratulations to Helen Cho, who reached out to us via email and guessed it correctly. The theme last week was Batman. All the questions had to yeah. do with actors who had played Batman in various medias. So congratulations, Helen Cho. We will send you some sort of swag. If you think you know the theme to this week's, you can reach out to us via social media. All social media is the underscore never underscore games. You can give us a phone call. That's 406 Games 24 406 426 3724. Or reach out to us via email at hello at the nevergames.com. Woo! All right. So, Tom, you were mentioning how you had a friend's at the horse man school when taylor swift was uh i guess not invited but forced to make an appearance <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure they were um they may have been a, a couple of years behind that but um yeah i had a friend who went to the horse man school do you and... have like any inside scoops of what they what happened if if it happened around the same time or my my understanding was that when that first was announced, like the half the student body was excited because right. hey Taylor Swift's coming. Yeah, yeah. And then we're disappointed when they were like, no, she's not. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> surprising that she didn't go anyway. Like I feel like even if she didn't perform, like I mean, not to spend time like shitting on Taylor Swift, but like good on her for like donating money and stuff. But I feel like she still yeah. made well, like an appearance. Like yeah, she can show up and like there's there's people there who are. I imagine I don't actually know anything, but there's probably people there who are like just hard of hearing rather yeah, than completely deaf. Yeah, so that's the thing is that there are like, people there who are hard of hearing, but also like also, people who are deaf enjoy music. Yeah, you guys. right. They just don't yeah. turn hear up the it. bass like, more. There's a lot of other <laughs> yeah. aspects. Yo, have, have you guys seen those shirts that they make now for deaf people for concerts? It's that they like no. pick up. So it, it, it's like a it's like a shirt that has like a bunch of sensors on it, and it like picks up sound waves when people are at concerts. So they can like feel the music. Yeah, like, and yeah. So it's a lot like of that. it's a lot of oh. rhythm. It's a lot of like heavy bass sound effects yeah. that comes right. through. But like so for for years, the equivalent of alarm clocks for the deaf community have been these like pads that you put under your uh, fitted sheet mm -hmm. that vibrate your bed. And it works on a similar principle to that, where huh. instead of doing it at a specific time, 
It that... takes in sound data and then vibrates different parts of your body in specific ways so that you can feel the rhythm of the music. That sounds yeah. great. Awesome. Until you get used to it, it sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> right. The, the vibrating awake sounds terrifying. Yeah, I would <laughs> never imagine, like, all right, I got to wake up because there's an earthquake. Like, that can never... Oh, see, I'm thinking I'd wake up like, oh, fuck, spiders everywhere. Oh, see, <laughs> it, it's the catalyst to any fear. Like, so, <laughs> I, think, I think there are some versions that, in addition to the vibration, have flashing lights. Uh, Even from... worse, it'll start epilepsy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, this is horrible. I feel so... Oh. I, honestly, I would like that so much more than, like, a sound alarm. I think I'd be getting abducted by aliens if, if that when, happened. When <laughs> I was in college... Uh, I had an alarm clock that I constantly set to the radio, mm. but constantly I was having dreams where just people in my dreams would start singing <laughs> or reading the ads about to Toyotas. They just keep yelling, <laughs> Baba Booey, Baba Booey. <laughs> and it's just like, uh, God, Kevin, stop trying to sell me a Toyota. And then I would sleep for like 25 more minutes. God <laughs> damn it, Kevin. I Okay, this is very different, but I had a roommate who loved taking naps and would take a nap every Friday, set an alarm for 8 o'clock, and then go out. And then on Saturday, she would leave earlier and forget to turn the alarm off, So and also forget her phone. Like, l almost every week, forgot her phone, left, forgot to turn off the alarm. So the, behind a locked door, there'd just be an alarm going off every oh. Saturday at 8 o'clock. It's the worst. It that sucks, I had, dude. <laughs> How long did they live with you? Two fucking years. <laughs> That's way too much. That's so, so much too much. I had a friend in college who one time left Thursday night and forgot to shut off his Friday morning <laughs> alarm. Didn't come back until Monday night. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I had to call like an RA after an extended period of time and be like, please break into his room and turn off his alarm. <laughs> And for these traumatic experiences, we need something else much lighter and yeah, entertaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else do we got? <laughs> uh, so it's fun that it's funny to me that you asked for something much lighter. Yeah, seriously. Uh, and not <laughs> dramatic when what I'm going to talk about for the multimedia minute is called Little Nightmares 2. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I, um, I literally I watched the um, gameplay intro thing. And I like got goosebumps. The game is awesome. It's all right, sounds so, yes. terrifying. <laughs> it's I wouldn't necessarily say that it's terrifying. It's it's definitely scary. So it's a it's a horror survival puzzle game. You play as a character who is apparently allegedly named Mono, but you've never like there's no there's no speaking uh, in the game or anything like that. So you don't like you don't discover his name in the game. I just they 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 did name him. But it's a sequel to the original Little Nightmares in which you played a character named Six. And basically, it's almost like, it's almost, most of it's like a, a, a side-scroller kind of thing. Like mm -hmm. a really advanced version of a side-scroller. Uh, and you just have to interact with these environments, solve puzzles to basically survive and get away from these various creatures um, and people that want to do harm to you. It's gorgeous. Like, the art style, I think, is phenomenal it looks mm. inc incredible like i'm watching the video now it reminds me a lot of like the ori animation mm -hmm. but like much more realistic but the same sort of fluidity and right. uh, amb ambient glow and shit like that whenever it's it needs to be but i mean it's it's just like you said it's much darker than ori but like i still get the same vibe yeah it's uh, very it. it's very dark um and it's it's very it's cr i would say that it's more creepy than anything else but there are like very very tense moments like i just wow. passed i just passed through this one like sequence where i'm running down a hallway and then all of a sudden like just arms come from every side of the hallway and you have to navigate them and they're trying to grab you and like stuff like that like you definitely get like you tense up you know yeah it's um, weird like it it screams horror but then it also kind of like makes fun of itself it's you know what it, it's the under the bed scene in Toy Story, when he went over to Sid's house, I feel like it's that. <laughs> it's yeah, that's a fair comparison. Yeah. Um, the so the first one I loved, I thought it was great, but it it took place on one um, environment, which was a ship called the Maw, 
and basically you were just trying to get off the ship and it was like a luxury cruise liner for whatever these fucking weird creatures are that want to eat you and you're just trying to escape that ship but then this second one you're playing as a different character and there's a bunch of different environments like right now i'm in a hospital and i fucking hate it it's the worst <laughs> is it's it terrifying one, did you um, say it was one setting throughout the entire thing or in the first one but in this right. one in this one it's different settings so like right now i'm in the hospital which is terrifying uh before that i was in a school which uh, yeah was messed up and then you're also in between these settings you're in um there's like a f a big field where there's like a hunter with a shotgun that's chasing after you one of the things that i'm seeing about this is that um i feel like a lot of the work that they're doing is with lighting yeah that yeah. you know it's very dark very high contrast strong singular light sources yes but that a lot of the characters so the, the two things I've noticed about the characters is that um, the characters are all very small. Yeah. So, so the characters that you play are very small. And then right. there's also, in the school, there are these mean characters that are your size called bullies. But any of the major, like, villains are, like, are huge in comparison human to you. Size. Yeah, they're, like, human size. Um, but the thing that I think is really interesting is that it actually visually is very reminiscent to me uh, of Little Big World. Yeah, yeah. Only with a very hot, dark, high contrast okay. shifting yeah. it. Yeah, to I was horror. I was about to reference um, Unraveled as well, which is basically Unraveled is great. Li like Little Big World, almost you know shot for shot. So it's a lot of fun, and it's uh, the second one is definitely a lot bigger than the the first one. And what's super cool is that I'm not spoiling anything here, but you do actually you run into you play as Mono, but you actually run into the. Uh, protagonist of the first game, Six. Oh, no shit. And you've got, like, a cooperative kind of experience going on. Like, That's cool. Like, you can find where you need to start a puzzle, and you can, like, call out to Six, and he'll she'll come over and, you know, jump on each other's backs and, like, climb up things. It, it's pretty cool. Hmm. Um, Is there, from what you've described so far, I'm uh, not hearing anything about, it, like, a storyline. It sounds like it's just, like... It's more about the the visuals and like the creepiness so, of it. Yeah, I it's the storyline. There's some sort of storyline there, but it's something that I haven't actually finished the game yet. So I okay. I, I I'm not. Is it like a slow reveal thing? I think so. Kind of? Yeah, like I'm kind of discovering it as I go. But most of the point of the game is to like survive and escape. Hmm. Yeah. Um, now. Um, one of the video game podcasts I listened to reviewed this game about a month ago, and they said one of the biggest drawbacks was, like, platform positioning yeah. or something like that, where, like, the way the camera is, if you're thinking about just jumping onto, like, a platform vis-a-vis, -vis, like, old-school Mario, yeah. um, you could be shifted, you know, a few inches over or something like that, where you could completely miss that uh, platform. Was that... a big issue or i don't think it's that big of an issue i think it's something it's definitely it's definitely something that you experience when you like first play it but you like get, you get used to that pretty quickly like the first the first time you have to like jump across like a, a cavern or a ravine or something like that you're definitely like you can miss and and die but then you'll you'll figure it out and be like oh i just have to like move closer to the camera and then i'll end up on the platform the one thing i will say that that's tough is that because I, you have like a, a buddy in this game in six there are a bunch of like things that you have to jump that you can't make that jump so like six will get launched over it over to it and then like hold on to something and like reach out her hand and you basically have to jump and grab her hand so it's just like a different mechanic where you have to actually like actively grab like you can't just be there and the character will do it in the game for you um, mm -hmm. but it's the puzzles are pretty pretty well done. I mean, there was a puzzle where, like, I just saw a bunch of, like, x-rays of, like, stuffed animals on the wall, and, like, one of the x-rays had, like, a key in it, so I had to find that, check it in an x-ray machine, and then, like, break it open to get the key. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That is neat. And that then, is cool. But a lot, of, and a lot of them are just, like, finding a movable object and, like, dragging it to a place so that you can jump up and, like, go, you know. Yeah. Which reminds me a little bit of the puzzles in Skyrim. That, yeah. like, the answer answers are all in the world, right. like, if you look hard enough for them. Right. 
so right when this game came out, I was being the poor person, and I got little big, little big world one on a uh, Game Pass, Little Nightmares one. Sorry, and I was playing that as sort of like a substitute, and there are a lot of weird sort of divergences of the path that you can take, and I was more I was expecting more of this game to be just pretty much straight forth and linear, mm-hmm. and I don't even know if this is true or not. So I guess I'm asking this for both uh, games. Does it matter which path you take? <laughs> so, or is it? Does it all kind of like lead up to, to more or less of the same same result? It's linear. Like there, there aren't other paths. There's like a lot of environment that you can explore. Like you can, you'll come out to a street and you can go like down the alleyway. Mm. When you really like, in order to advance the story in the game, you have to go like into this building. Um, so you can explore that alleyway, but like it's not going to lead to anywhere. You have to go down the one path in order to advance but you can explore that other path it's just going to end at a certain point right okay all right yeah i the the couple of you know diverging paths i've i've gotten to so far made it seem like that but i i was always nervous about like leaving the wrong path out you know right so and it's mo- mostly mostly it's they're they're like collectibles like so with okay. mono he like he starts out he's wearing a paper bag over his head but you can find different hats. Like right now, I'm wearing like a fucking aluminum can. So there's like stuff that you can collect um, by exploring those different parts of the environment. But in order to finish the game, there's like one distinct path that you have to go through. All right. Yeah. But it's a lot of fun. Little Nightmares 2. Check it out. I think it's for all platforms. So I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. Um, or if you're poor like me, get the first one on Game Pass for free. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that has been my multimedia minute. Cool. What a minute it was. Yeah. Required by law to say that every time. <laughs> <laughs> or else it's entrapment. Yeah. <laughs> well, that brings us to Stump the Expert. I am this week's expert. I am an expert in Frank Turner's 2008 album love ire and song this song noel actually introduced it to me back in like 2010 i hadn't really listened to music at all it just wasn't a part of my life and noel gave me a flash drive (laughs) filled with like 15 gigabytes of music and on there was frank turner uh uh, some other ones I remember were like the Dodos. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my the, god! The Freelance Whales. This was um, oh Freelance oh Whales. Oh my still, god! Freelance yeah. Whales still fuck man. I mean, they only put out like an album and a half, but oh boy, it's that, good, that good one shit. album is really good. <laughs> yeah. I love that. It album. really is. Yeah. Yeah. But amongst uh. that was Frank Turner, and he, hearing that like got me into music. That one album in particular made me go out and buy a guitar, which Connor was mentioning the name of his guitar before. This one right here, which all of Good Damn It's music has been written on, is named Frank. Oh, wow. I thought you were going to say Travis. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> a lot of guitars that all yeah. have names. Yeah, all my guitars have names. I it's don't, Emily I and Dante. Three guitars, and I haven't named any of them. Why? It's like, why? Why would you do that? I also, I'm also parent. not the type to yeah. name my car, and I don't understand why people do that either. I name everything. <laughs> 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 I had a computer named Yolanda. Oh, God, Yolanda. Was that the white one made out of, uh, out of Legos? <laughs> Essentially, yeah. It, that started it was... peeling off? <laughs> like the, the bottom peeled off. Oh, no, that's... no, no. That was, that was a different one. Uh, no, what's that's that my one? current computer. That's the one that got drunk in college and wouldn't let me use the letter P anymore. Um, awesome. <laughs> All right, we we have we are diverging so right. fucking much. Frank Turner's 2008 album Love Iron Song. It is possibly my favorite album. It's definitely in my top five, along with uh, England Keep My Bones, one of his other albums. Uh, Frank Turner is still releasing music. His latest studio album uh, was. Tales from No Man's Land, which is, it's a really, really good album. It's all songs about 
women whose stories are not often told. Um, mm. And then he also released a podcast alongside of it in which he like meets with somebody who's like an expert in that person. And they have like a half hour long discussion about who they are and where they come from. It is really, really interesting. The podcast is really cool because he goes a lot into his songwriting process in it, both with the lyrics uh, based on when he's talking to these people talking about where certain lyrics came from and also a little bit about the musicality behind it but nice. that's not the one but we're that's talking not about. the album that we're talking about yeah. right yes. frank turner if you're listening we, we'd love to have you on the show yeah <laughs> just Future gotta of the throw show. that out there like <laughs> yeah come on whenever you want for however long you want yeah. we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll do it we'll name it after you yeah, um, <laughs> the, the Franker games. <laughs> the Franker games. Sounds like it's about hot dogs. Franker games. Yeah. <laughs> but this is Stump the Expert. I am an expert in this album. I gotta say, dude, this was fucking. This was yeah. this was a puzzle. For anybody who hasn't listened before, Stump the Expert. We we each take a turn, claiming that we are an expert in something. Everybody else gets to ask us one question. If we can answer it correctly. They do not get a point. If they are able to stump us, they get a point. And if I, as the expert, get all of the questions correct, I get a point. Which which hasn't happened yet. Yes, yes none yet. of us have been experts. It has not occurred. Prior to today, when it's going to happen. All right. Who wants to go first? I've got one for you, Trevor. All right. No, I, spent, I had a really hard time with this because my first inclination was to do something involving lyrics and i know you have every single lyric to this album memorized <laughs> in order so i was like what, well what can i do that'll really like fuck you over so here's here's my question if you were to rearrange the songs in love iron song i love this. instead of a track order by length from shortest to longest oh, god what would the fifth <laughs> song be the fifth <laughs> That is an absurd question. <laughs> and you're already wrong. I do think it's kind of absurd. <laughs> that is a ridiculous question. Oh, God. Wait, uh, uh, Tom, give him uh, how many total songs there are, just in case if he doesn't even know that. <laughs> uh, total songs is 12. Yeah. Right. I will let you know that the shortest song is 2 minutes and 37 seconds. And the longest song is five minutes and eight seconds. Yeah. The longest ones, I've, I'm pretty sure, going to be Jet Lag is going to be the longest one. It's the yeah, one at that, the end of the album. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was, uh, That's right. It's an incredible song. Um, so we're going from longest to shortest? Shortest to longest. Shortest to longest. Which one's fifth? Jesus. Yep. Um, hey, you, you gave us 45 minutes. <laughs> that you've listened to nonstop for the past 13 years. Just say what you think's in the middle and then back it off a bit. I mean, ranging from 2 minutes to 5.08, like... <laughs> 2.37 to 5.08. 2.37 to 5.08. Come on, Trevor, all I'm hearing are excuses. I'll give you a hint if you want it, Trevor. I will take a hint. <laughs> I will give you the length of the song. Okay. <laughs> Is three minutes and twenty seven seconds. Three twenty seven. Wow. I think I think I know what it is. Um which is almost exactly between two minutes and thirty seven seconds and five minutes yeah, and eight seconds. Yeah. I I'm gonna have to just take a wild guess. I'm gonna go with the title track, Love Iron Song. Can I guess too? Can I steal? Sure. <laughs> is it uh photosynthesis? Nope. Oh, You're okay. both wrong. It's long live the queen. Uh, huh. Yeah, there was no way I was ever going to get that. <laughs> uh, I mean, that takes a lot of pressure off of us, though. Yeah. I, I propose, well, see, I think the thing that's funny is that you're like, that's a ridiculous question. And Connor's like, yeah, I agree. I proposed this question a week ago. I know. <laughs> I immediately it. was like, I think that works. And I was like, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> Well, Trevor, what I've got for you is just a very short riff uh, that happens in one of the songs. I'm just going to play it. I just learned it today. So <laughs> I need you to tell me what song this comes from. All right. Can you hear that? Yep. Yep. All right. Sounds like the end of the world as we know it by REM. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds 
second place. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get second place for that, Noel. <laughs> Granted, it's not in the right key because he uses a capo. Oh, God damn it, Connor. <laughs> I can play it in the right key. Yeah. yeah I don't know if that's a huge get difference. Get a capo. <laughs> How would that Jesus. make it that much of a difference? Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. Well, I fucked it up, but yeah, that was most of it. <laughs> was well, now I know what? what it is, now that you've got it in the right key. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it goes. Oh, I'm getting his Fuck. REM. Fucking get out of my head. Um, Fuck, it's not coming to me. Uh, is that just like a random part in the middle of the song? It is in the middle of the song. It's actually towards the end, but I mean, it's it's a part that you should know. Is it a bridge? I feel like I'm giving too much away if I answer is that question. Is it a guitar? <laughs> no, he's playing the drum part. <laughs> oh, um... <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not the expert. I, I'm <laughs> blank in a blank. Ah, fuck. So I, I was listening to a whole bunch of Frank Turner this week, not this album. <laughs> <laughs> which is a stupid thing to do um i can't i don't know it it's not i think i'm out of time probably i could sit here and Sands. Sands. fuck it is in perfect tense yeah god oh, man. damn it all right. Fuck. Well, Trevor, let's see if you can I redeem yourself. I hate this fucking game. I hate this game. <laughs> yep. No, it sucks, and we all hate it. And we're all bad at our <laughs> things that we're good at. Damn it. All right. <laughs> all right. To be God fair, like, it, I Noel. do think that that was, like, a, a reasonable part of the song. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Seventh right. song on the album. Two minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> God damn it, Tom. <laughs> all the right. shortest song on the album. Trevor, if... if your act of redemption were to ever come, it would be now, because I feel like my, my question is probably the easiest. In this song, I knew Proof Rock before he got famous. Yeah. Frank Turner lists a bunch of his friends. Yeah. Name all eight of them. Let's see. Jay is our St. George. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Adam. Yep. And I, I can give you a hint. It, it, it is actually two stanzas of this song that he says, not just the one. Okay. Tommy. Uh, Tommy, yep. The pressure's getting me right now. I keep on, like... <laughs> You're missing three big ones. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to just do, one, do it in order. Uh, Trey. Yes. Um, Zoe and Harps. Yep. All right, you have two left. Two left, yeah. <laughs> Just gonna do, 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 do. not listen to that. Um, do, 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 fuck. <sighs> Need something for you, buddy. Yeah. I'll give you another hint. It's none of our names on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, except for Tommy, which... <laughs> well, I mean, you already, you already said it, yeah. Would you prefer to be known as Tommy? <laughs> I was for many years. Hey, Tommy. It was Tommy and then Tomo and now Tom. Mm. Trevor, need an answer? I'm going to uh, call you T-Money. God Go damn right it. ahead. Um... I don't have it. God damn it. Uh, so the first hint was two stanzas because uh, he only talks about one friend in the stanza before he talks about all the others. Justin. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Uh, is I'm pretty sure that's the one who's who's the only one among us who's ever going to make it. Yeah. I think. And then yeah. my buddy Dave Danger. He smiles at strangers. Oh, shit. God. <laughs> it's in the line with Trey. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I was. Trey. I would, had. 
Which was really weird because I thought we were never going to get yeah. Zoe and Harps because up until today, I thought it was the words were Solon Hearts <laughs> in that line. Yeah, he, he really slurs we'll it together on it. Solon it, Harps were scamper our, will scamper off to victory in the city we call him. But yeah. yeah. Ah, yo, fuck. yo, you're dumb about this album. I know. <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> I deserve I it. Than I, I deserve Straight it. Straight for, for the heart. <laughs> God damn! Sorry, Trevor. Fuck this game. <laughs> the brutality <laughs> of uh, Stump the Expert. Ah. Sh- shall we jump into some fake ads? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make Trevor feel a little bit better. It's not gonna work. God. I mean, you're, so, uh, you're still in the lead, Trevor. You are. Yeah. You're up a much? point on both Connor and I. Noel has two, Trevor has nine, yeah, Connor and I are tied at eight. Yeah, but look at all those second places. <laughs> well, today's yeah, episode of The Never Brain... Ga- <laughs> <laughs> the Never Brains. The Never bla- <laughs> <laughs> Because do we have brains? <laughs> Almost never. Today's episode of The Never Games is brought to you by Corkadoodle. Corkadoodle is the newest option in the paint and sip trend. Get together with a group of your friends, bring some wine or some beers, and completely nor- ignore our instructors as they desperately teach you how to make your own comic strip and <laughs> keep people from vomiting in the ink sink. <laughs> the downside to those other paint and sip places? That's right, noisy instructors. At Corkadoodle, you'll, we only employ cartoonists who barely speak above a whisper so that they'll <laughs> never in- interrupt your slurred conversations. <laughs> Head on over to Cork Doodle today and sign up for a class. That's cork a doodle.com. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Today's episode of the Never Games is also brought to you by flannels. Frequently, all of us are sporting a flannel, but this week only two of us are wearing flannels. Hey, you want to look like a lumberjack? No? <laughs> oh, you want to look like a brewer? No? You want to look like a hipster douchebag? Get yourself a flannel. <laughs> <laughs> Covering all the bases. <laughs> all three bases. Yep. <laughs> Today's episode is also brought to you by Cadence. Cadence helps you speak coherently by arranging. I How? Hate this. Words are emphasized. Are you going to speak soon? Then you need Cadence. <laughs> you can try Cadence free. By calling for 064-2637. <laughs> Cadence. Say things correctly. <laughs> by emphasizing certain words. Cadence brought to you by Christopher Walken. <laughs> <laughs> I worked so hard to not make that sound like Christopher Walken. <laughs> this episode is also brought to you by oh fuck I was giving myself an extra two seconds to think of this uh frank turner um <laughs> for anyone that can make trevor as mad as uh he just was i'll i'll give you money for that <laughs> or you can give me money for that not sure how ads work but yeah thank you frank turner well thank you for listening to another wonderful episode of the never games wait 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 wait, 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 wait. we missed something What's the uh, expert subject for next week? Oh, that's right. Oh, shit. Uh, who's doing it next week? You are. You again, you. Noel. Fuck. <laughs> Can I do Pokemon again? No. No. <laughs> we'll, well, we'll just stump you again. Yeah. But barely. I f- okay. You can't call um, yourself an expert when we already know that you're not. <laughs> because I only think I'm an expert in like three things. Yeah, right, I, I uh, had to dig deep even for this one. Like. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll dig a little less deep uh, for mine. Um, you guys can get to ask me questions about the hit series, How I Met Your Mother. Oh, oh. damn it. Yeah, sorry, Connor, but you gotta you gotta sit through that bitch again. <laughs> um, except for seasons six. two through eight. <laughs> <laughs> seasons one, two, six, nine, and twelve. No, um, he made up an extra season at the end there. <laughs> except, <laughs> except you can ask about eleven, season. but not twelve. <laughs> I forgot how many seasons. I there hate are. that you're making me look into this garbage show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, ex- except for the last season, I was going to say except for the series finale because it's absolute 
Oh, that, se- that last season was so upsetting to me. But the last season is just... <laughs> <laughs> It's got they, this weird okay, sort of time alert, hop jump. But they yeah, spent this... an entire fucking season leading up to finally meeting the mother in like literally dude, 15 dude, okay, minutes okay. later she dies. <laughs> like, and not only that, the entire season is based on like 18 hours of like real life time. Yeah. Somehow like, they made like 30 hours of television based on 18 hours. Yeah. And it <laughs> felt like 140. God. It felt like... Yeah. How long in hours is it between... One Olympics to another, <laughs> because it was that. All right, let's let's go to whatever the hell we were doing before. Yeah. Well, thank you once again for listening to another wonderful episode of the Never Games. You can find us anywhere you find great podcasts. You can also like, follow, and subscribe uh, on our social medias, all of which are going to be at the underscore Never underscore Games. And feel free to give us a rating on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever the hell you are listening to this. And just like Tom said earlier, if you know the answer to this week's or last week's theme between the lines, even though you won't get an award for last week's theme between the lines because someone already won it, um, uh, or and we you, announced it. Where is or, this going? I mean, you, you, can, you can just you can just uh, you know send it in anyway. Or if you have a game that you would like for us to play, or even just a game idea that we can take it in town, uh, feel free to reach out to us wherever you want at hello at the nevergames dot com or any social media. That's Facebook, Twitter. Instagram, LinkedIn, MySpace, OnlyFans, anything like that. Just give us a search uh, by u- <laughs> by using the Never Games with underscores for spaces. Or if you want to give us a sh- uh, give us a shout and call us and ask if our refrigerator is running, the number is forty sixty four twenty six thirty six twenty four or four zero six games two four. And if you really enjoyed everything that you've heard you want to allow us you want to help us out in creating more uh delicious delicious content for you in the future we do have a patreon is patreon.com slash the never games donate as little as one dollar a month all the way up to a certain amount but there are different uh options that we can give you we can send you t-shirts we can give you a shout out on the air get some bonus content you can even get on a silent zoom call with us if you're intrigued by that but yeah patreon.com slash the never games yeah, we don't know what that means either. But <laughs> <laughs> all this information and more can be found at our website. That's thenevergames.com. Go there for all the episodes, all this other stuff. And to find out about NeverCon 2021, thenevergames.com slash NeverCon for Never ticket Con, Boca and Raton. Detail inf- detailed information. The pictures from last year's NeverCon. It's it's all going to be so great. You don't want to miss out on NeverCon. It's not happening. All of this is at thenevergames.com. I, I like that you say the pictures from last year's. It's not from this upcoming year. That hasn't happened yet. <laughs> and all of the music from today's episode is done by me. And Noel and does the is- drums. Oh. We call ourselves. <laughs> I almost canceled myself out. <laughs> the band name is Good Damn It gooddammit.bandcamp.com for all of it. Awesome. And thank you so much for listening to a wonderful, amazing episode of St. Patrick's Day version of the Never Games. We had such fun making this uh, making this episode. My name has been and will always be Noel McInnes. I am Trevor Kelly, at least for now. <laughs> My name is Tom O'Brien, as far as you know. I am Connor Provost. Good night, sweethearts. And once again, this is the Never Games. Do we play games? <laughs> Almost, Almost never friends. Friends. Cocker mouth. All friends. <laughs> says when the sticker box studios. But I, I really hate that game 25% of the time. <laughs> <laughs>
Is it Zachary? I swear to God. It's not Zachary. Uh, congratulations to Tom the Right One is Mr. Splashy Pants. Damn. Good. Ah, job. See, the thing is, is that you guys.